Dub Hates here from season 11 alone. I'm going to do a really quick recap of episode 9, which just aired a couple days ago. I'm going to start with, I guess I'll just start with myself. I had shrew feces in one of my stored pike, and I have, I had a couple different storage areas. I had some out of tree over off to the one side of my shelter that I don't think it's been shown yet, and I had all that, all that fish in my shelter but so that spot in my shelter it was kind of like a hole on the other side of my bed and it stayed really really cold and there was it was always pretty much always frozen I mean the pike was sort of thawed out when I pulled it out of there but I did it was sort of warming up that day and I and I just wanted to look and make sure everything was good and found out quickly that it was not so I altered my my food cache drastically after that day but um, yeah, and then that pike, I didn't, it's not like I threw that pike away. I used all the pieces from that as bait for my, um, for my fishing sets because I had a lot of them going on out there. Um, they haven't showed those either, but they're, they're sort of 550 paracord with hooks tied onto them and they're just thrown out. For burbot, it works really good because the 550 paracord can cut through the, the, the shelf ice and burbot, I was getting, actively getting burbot, um, quite a quite a bit and they're extremely delicious but it hasn't shown any of those at all you saw a burbot head i think in the video in the tv like a couple days ago but that's about it other than that you saw the fillet the piece of fillet that had a worm in it some sort of parasite that was embedded in the in the actual flesh um, yeah i ate the mouse feces i got sick and that's the only food i think i've lost to anything out there which is which is pretty good considering what we've seen this season so if i lose just one pike to to anything um i don't i don't think that was too bad but i'm eating quite a bit at this point because after my sickness well i should say prior to my sickness i was putting down five to ten pounds of, of fish every single day i was eating so much till my stomach was very full and then during my sickness, I, I slowed down just a little bit because I honestly I didn't want to eat. I just wanted I wanted to eat so that I didn't progress further into a, a downward spiral. After I mean I had a fever, I had the diarrhea, I had just felt like complete garbage, and it took everything I had to to cook food, boil water for, or should I say I should say melt snow for for drinking water to occasionally go out there and get firewood. Like it sucked bad trying to work through that sickness made it through the other end and hopefully we can start really hammering down on some some food stores but winter has arrived in full blower float full blown fashion oh the other thing that happened is i broke my glasses i have them right here i lost one of the lenses i lost in the flight home this lens popped out and I don't, I have no idea. I think TSA went through my bag and somehow that lens was missing. Bringing back a lot of memories. And they still smell like smoked fish from it being in my shelter so much. But yeah, my glasses broke again. And I have another pair of glasses here to show you what exactly took place. So the first break was like, was like right there at the top of the, I don't know, we'll call it the bridge. So that the lens wouldn't stay in. But there was a, there was a crack here that happened that same day. It was right, right in here somewhere. And I knew that they were short-lived. I mean, there was no way, well, there was a way, but I wore them as long as I could, and then I came up with, with this other, other willow branch sort of deal here. But it was amazing, the glasses, that were, when I fixed those glasses with the paracord and the, the pine pitch clue that they lasted as long as they did because they were on the brink of, of breaking um, as soon as I fixed them. But so we'll move from that. We'll we'll slide into Timber, who fixed his shelter with a really crafty idea to ventilate the the smoke out the back. Um, he took his moose hide, sort of made a little separation there. He would would collect up there, um, cause the the smoke to draft out, which was a pretty genius little little game plan, and it it seems to work. His his fire his. Shelter did not look smoky at all. So, so Timber starts talking about um, having sore teeth from eating his jerky. 
I'm sure he's boiling a lot of it to, to soften it up, but it's easier to just try to eat it. And I'm guessing that's what he's, he's doing a lot more of that. So I don't think he's eating as much of it as he, as he could be, but um, I'm sure, I'm sure he's rehydrating it often and but his teeth are hurting and which is something i mean if you have dental issues on a loan you you're in rough shape and a lot of people come out of that show with permanent damage to their teeth that um is very very hard to fix i mean a lot of people some people lose teeth i remember who but i heard about somebody coming out of a loan and having like 30 cavities or something it was it was it was a while it was a lot that's the kind of crazy stuff i mean if your teeth aren't like really really good going into that um you could be in in for some serious trouble um so yeah anybody planning on being on the show get your teeth like money before you head out there because that's a real risk you, you get a toothache out there and, and that's i mean i haven't had a lot of toothaches in my life but if you get one out there you're going to be in big 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 trouble i mean that's extreme pain timber's going through that so he's fighting through that that's why he's not eating a ton of his jerky and then we have a really sweet thing Timber did. He made gorge hooks out of his moose rib bones, and he actually caught a pike on it. Kick ass, Timber. I think it's the first fish in the history of alone that we've seen caught on a gorge hook that I know of, that I can think of, and that's fantastic because somehow Timber's down to like four hooks, he said, which is crazy. I, I, um, I was fortunate that I had a spot in front of my, where I fished often that I had isolated that did not have stumps out there. So I, I would, was very, very specific about a narrow channel of where I threw my, threw my bait out. And I did not deviate from that very much because I knew, I knew the spot had fish in it. And I also knew that, um, there wasn't snags in there. So I was, I was being very, very careful with my hooks. And at this, at this point in the game, I bet I have probably have 20, 20 hooks left still. 20 out of 25 at day 50, what does it say, 52? I think I'm at 53 or something. Um, who knows, I might get a little more reckless soon with those. But, but it's anyway, it's great that Timber has an alternative strategy to, to hook fish with, his, with using his moose for even one more purpose. So that's, that was kick-ass, Timber. I appreciated watching that. So Timber talks a little bit more about what he wants to do with the money. Buying a house and making it so his kids feel more secure about um, having sort of a home base, which you can't blame him. And he said, he also said he moved 38 times in the, in the lives of those, of his kids. So that's wild. So it'd, it'd feel good to ha for them to have like some place to just say, okay, that's home. That's always home, but we're traveling, but we still have home, you know, wherever, wherever Tim would, Timber would buy a house. But um, yeah, that's a, um, Something to shoot for, man. That's that's a that's a good way to spend the money to make your kids feel sort of stable. And you got to appreciate the fact that what Timber does. He he said he he moves and keeps kind of a low profile and doesn't talk a lot about what he what he does because a lot of the times he's in countries that literally I don't I don't know if he's allowed to help the people that are in them. I think he was talking about. So well, he was saying that. So if you're if you're going risking it all to go into to foreign countries all over the world that that you um, are not allowed to help the people that you're helping, that's a, takes a special kind of person to, to even to pull something like that off and to, and to be willing to do it to help help all the people that Timber helps. So you have gotta love Timber, and he kind of elaborated on that a little bit because everybody acts like he's some sort of covert operative for. The, the government or doing whatever the hell, whatever the hell people think. I mean, I've, I've read all sorts of, all sorts of weird stuff, but yeah, he's just, um, doesn't, he just helps people and he doesn't talk about it. I mean, that's kind of, you can't hate on that, but I love, I love Timber and we'll go to Sarah next. So Sarah has, she thinks kidney, kidney pain and her husband, um, he, she promised her husband before she went out, like, I'm going to stop before I get any permanent damage to my body. And she wants to hold up to that promise. So she kind of calls it quits with, um, with her pain, but she did one hell of a good job foraging. She's eating all sorts of crazy stuff, 
vegetables and, and roots and everything else. She essentially survived 40, 41 or 42 days almost exclusively on plant material, which is, that's, that's really, really good. That's hard to do. I mean, she had some grouse, but o overall, I don't know if, I don't remember seeing any other protein at all from Sarah. So for her to pull off that, that kind of foraging ability is, is, is pretty, pretty amazing. And you gotta, you gotta hand it to her for that. So we, we love and appreciate you, Sarah. And it's sad. It's really sad to see you go. You kicked ass. There's no other way. There's other, no other way to put it. You really kicked ass out there. And, and uh, there's anybody who survives 42 days solo in the Arctic, living off plants and, and two birds is, is somebody that really does know what the hell they're doing. So, um, yeah, that's about all there is to say about that. But um, I'm sure you're positive your husband was happy to see you come home healthy. And, and um, Sarah doing, is doing good right now so so William goes to his food, his food cache and pulls out a beaver foot and eats that baby and it's it's a kind of amazing if you if you cook something long enough all the the sinew and and tallow and everything else in in a piece of meat can can be eaten it all it literally all melts away if you cook it long enough and he did that with this beaver foot and he literally ate it to the point where it was nothing but claws left which is talking about talking about like using a resource to its fullest extent it, um william really kicked ass with that and he he's being being very sparing i mean it, for him to just have one beaver foot well he had more food in in his cache he's he's starting to really save and pinch those calories and um unfortunately the next day within the next day or two or three i don't remember the timeline but sassy or something came in raided williams camp again not his camp but his rock food cache and william lost all of his beaver i'm sure it was very he, he was broke up over that i mean he, he he said um pretty much that's all the food that i have so it cuts to like a day or two or three later and he's out there out on the ice starting to make a, a, a ladder, like an ice ladder for sort of for safety. And um, three grouse, maybe the four grouse roll through and he has got a grouse area, man. That That's four grouse is more grouse than I saw in my entire time out there. And he sees four of them just like buzz his head, which is pretty remarkable. They're, there's a lot of food for those grouse over there, whatever it is they want. William's got him, and um, he goes over there like a stud and nooses a grouse, and you see, we see a different William than I've ever seen before. He is so damn excited about that grouse. You can you can tell that means the world to him. And he said, "What did he say? You couldn't you couldn't knock the this smile off my face with with something. I don't I don't remember what he said, but it was showing a new level of excitement that I've never ever seen out of that guy." So that's, I'm glad he got that grouse. He needed it bad and it, it gave him a little bit more wind beneath his wings. And I can tell you one thing, I feel, I feel blessed that I made it through my sickness. It was hard. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done because I felt as bad as I've ever felt in my entire life, sick wise. And to be able to, to push through and boil water and um, keep eating food and to make it out the other side of that. There's a, there is no worse feeling than, than a sickness on this show because it's the most powerless feeling. Like, like I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing everything right. I'm surviving. I'm getting food. I'm getting everything else. But this sickness is, is something that you can't, you don't have control over. There's, there's very few ways to take control of it. And I mean, I did a few things. I mean, I boiled, like I said, in the show, I boiled some, some caribou moss, which is, all the caribou moss that I had, and my my area did not have really caribou moss. I found a patch of it oh, well over a mile away, and I I brought I filled my pockets and I brought a bunch of it back, and that that helped sort of do something that helped silk up or solidify the stuff in my stomach. And then I I mentioned also that I ate a bunch of charcoal, which definitely helped soothe the stomach and and. Um, sort of tightened things up, if you will, without getting it too graphic. Somehow, 
I made it through. It was it was six, at least five six days that I felt like absolute hell with a fever, um, puking, diarrhea. Just it was it was it was the worst I've ever felt in my life. And to top it all off with the extreme cold and just trying to go out every day and and make sure I I keep catching getting food because the the ice is is coming and winter is coming and you can't you just can't stop you can't take a week off out there so i was able to keep keep pulling in burbot keep netting netting some uh, in canoe and and pike throughout the whole whole ordeal and blessed that i that i made it out of that and i were on the other side there and i think it left me at day 53 it really jumped ahead i, I, I somehow i went straight from day 40 to 53 um, there was some really, really cool stuff that happened in that time frame that, uh, unfortunately, they were, didn't get shown that I thought for sure was going to, that was a real humongous bummer for me, but I won't get into that. And make sure you check out Timber Claghorn's channel. He's got a new book out you can pre-order now, which is, Timber's, Timber's got a, a long story that you're going to want to read, so make sure you check out his book and check out The Big Land Trapper, that's William, William Markham Jr. on Instagram. And YouTube, he's got a big YouTube channel. He makes good videos. Um, Dusty Blake is on YouTube. Peter's on YouTube. Make sure you check out the official Alone podcast produced by the History Channel with, with Lucas Miller, uh, Callie North, and Dan Brown. You can find that on Spotify and Apple iTunes. I will see you guys soon in the next one because the next one, the next episode, episode 10, is going to be a banger. There's a lot going on. And, um, you're not going to want to miss it.